Well, greetings, everybody. Marianne here, Marianne Kilkenny Women Living in Community. It is time to talk about one of my favorite people, Dr. Bill Thomas. Yeah, so, but before that, Dr. Bill Thomas, the Renaissance Man of Aging. So, before that, I wanted to follow up on something I challenged you with last week. And that was, do you, any of you, have any golden girl stuff? So this is after I talked last week about the golden girl phenomenon. I hope that you didn't miss that. So, uh, I have to fess up. Look what I found. It's a coloring book for the golden girls. I haven't done anything in it. I keep thinking I'm going to. <laughs> so, so I fessed up. Anybody out there want to say hi? Hey, Nat. Hey, Judy. Glad you're here. Welcome. My my connection's a little slow, so that I might not be able to say hi to everybody. But we're gonna kick this off right now. Glad you're here. Um, let's see. So, oh, and I have. Uh, so by the end of this, I'm hoping that you'll understand why I have a love affair. I wore my love t-shirt with Dr. Bill. So I met uh, Bill Thomas and his wife Jude in 2006 uh, when we were, I was working on a project just starting my foray into aging and community and my love for it. And uh, we were looking at uh, some alternative models and actually a community upstate New York, so I was able to spend a weekend with them. So you will see why he's my hero, and part of it was timing at, that really made a difference, and that was my parents had died in nursing homes and not a very good experience uh, a couple years before I met Bill. So I was right to say, I'm not going to one of those things, nor anyone else that I love, I hope. So that was what kicked it off for me. And this man said, I'm going to burn them down. Well, instead of burning them down, he has all sorts of great ideas on how to change them from the inside out. <clears throat> yes, and that's why he's my hero. So a little bit about his story. And that was that Dr. Thomas was, or Bill was, a remembers in particular that he was emergency room doctor and he had a side gig being working at a nursing home and someone was he had, was asked to go talk to a, a an elder a patient and um they said and he went and talked to her and even though she was surrounded by people and everything there was really no meaningful connection and she said i'm lonely so this is the first time that Bill had ever really stood in the shoes of a resident of someone in a nursing home. Yeah, she was fed, she had shelter, and she was getting her medications, but she was lonely. And in his own words, he said, I was never the same after that. So Bill stopped practicing emergency medicine and became a geriatrician. And one of that geriatrician to this day, uh, the Wall Street no Journal names him as one of the top 10 Americans shaping the future of aging. And he's no slouch. Uh, hey, Linda. He's no slouch at all. He is a Harvard trained physician, author, performer, <laughs> and a serial entrepreneur as you will see in the things I outlined for you today of the things that he has actually done. Uh, what he's done is really work that has changed the terrain of human aging. That's, that's saying a lot and the fact that he has dedica his dedication has really made a cultural change in the future retirement in America. These are all huge things and things in my mind, because I'm talking, uh, need to be changed. 
So there's lots of things that he has worked with the system at the time. So let me know you're out there. Say hi. I see Nat. I see Judy. I see Linda. So glad you're here. And I love the comments. So I'm going to start with one of the things that he started with, and that is something called the Eden Alternative. And what it was, is, not was, it's still in place very much so, is humanizing nursing homes for both the staff, yes, and the residents. And the way to do this was he looked at the three plagues of aging. Loneliness, helplessness, and boredom. Yes. He's done, he did this work with his, his wife Jude and she still to this day is very involved in it and it's quite 1990 was a long time ago uh, this particular plague is outlined in one of the books that he wrote that I own and it's a fable yeah so you might be familiar with if you've ever visited a nursing home and that is uh, that the fact that plants and pets were introduced into nursing homes and the whole point of that was to give the residents some feeling of control over who they were, who they are. Yeah. So, hey, Barbara, Nancy, Jeanette, glad you're here. So we're talking about Dr. Thomas and the Eden Alternative. The next thing that he did was the Greenhouse Project. So again, moving towards the nursing home residents having more control of their lives. And it became not a traditional hospital-like nursing home, but small residential style pods where people have private rooms, their own bathroom, and the group living is in uh, the kitchen and a communal kitchen where they can socialize and interact. Gee, doesn't that sound like hmm, a family or home? because uh, he wants the residents to be feel like they're in a home and and not that kind of home <laughs> their own and he, his main this is based mainly on the greenhouse project is the belief that everyone has the right to age with dignity and empower the lives of the people that live there and work in them as well when I talked to Bill about um, the greenhouse years ago, uh, one of the things that, that spoke to me was that the caregivers, I forget what they're called, but it's a, I think it's a, 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 a translation for falcon, meaning, and we know what a falcon does. I mean, it's sharp and it's intelligent. And the caregivers, that's what they're called. I don't know what language it is, but um, the, the term that's referred to. And they're, they're trained in flower arranging. They're trained in cooking. They have higher pay and much better working conditions. Now, there's a big difference in itself from the traditional nursing home. And one of the things they're trained in cooking is things so that people can come and smell what's cooking in the kitchen as opposed to some of the other things that we might have experienced in a nursing home. So, now he's done this and the decades go on and he continues to be a visionary in the industry where he's really admire, admired for putting the seniors first, not the doctors and the medical personnel. <laughs> yeah. So this continues. His next his next journey, well, what was it? Well, the next thing is he went on tour for five years doing non-fiction theater. It was called Changing Aging Tour. This is no boring lecture. It had uh, music. It had storytellers. It was sort of a blend of medical science, storytelling, and live music. And the point was to challenge how the audience members view aging. And I, I met with one woman who had seen it and she said, boy, it wasn't really at all what I expected because she expected Bill to, you know, 
be his wonderful entertaining self but it was completely different than that and one of the, another person that I saw a quote from this is a beautiful evening that fills one with hope and excitement for the future wouldn't that be nice <laughs> hope and excitement for the future of us as we age well as you would expect no grass grows underneath dr. Thomas's feet uh, and those are feet with Birkenstocks most of the time uh, he he when he was out on tour he found something very very troubling and that was that housing was a huge huge issue as we already know but certainly for many people and seniors included so his next thing is called the Minka now this is the Goldilocks approach to housing it's not too big and it's not too small and it's efficient affordable compact homes now this was basically the notion that all people deserve in a place and manner of their choosing you seeing a theme here yeah and the tenants are pretty much of, of this Minka is simple living energy conscious building universal design and that there actually could be a community of Minka houses now this this is an amazing thing about dr. Bill or Bill um, he put the programming and everything for this in the, a friend's garage sounds very familiar to some other people who did things in garages as in like Apple so that it's and then I've given you sort of a history of all the things that he's done and then came COVID now the 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 greenhouses and had much lower infection rate and because mainly because they were smaller pods there was privacy and it kept the people safe you can imagine how wonderful that would be um, but again as someone who is all about uh, blowing up nursing homes uh, I mean really blowing them up now he wanted to he, he thought um, how do we how do we actually fix this so he started working on his next thing and that is called canopy so this is about let, let moving past the era of institutionalization creating a model based on one of the oldest ideas that we have which is people living in their own homes yeah Wow I don't know Barbara if I didn't say hi to you hi Barbara and I, I actually was when I was looking into some of the things about the more recent things that Bill has done this came up uh, and it, there's actually ones being built in Indiana on the campus of a continuing care retirement community and I also saw him talking to a group of I guess architects and builders and he was challenging them to say building things like you've been building them is not going to fit for the boomers it's more like Legos where you want to, the, it to be modular and adaptable so some of the things that that Bill believes is no matter how frail you are older people need their own homes and their own communities uh, and basically you know the model for the oldest things that the, the oldest time things that we've done the oldest ideas we have is the people living in their own homes <clears throat> yeah Barbara is talking about here she posted a friend is in 96 and lives in assisted living yeah very expensive on the fourth floor and yeah he's so bored yes pay a lot of money to be bored yeah and they're very short staffed that was always my experience in nursing homes as well yeah and the people that don't really want to be working there oftentimes so back to what canopy actually is it's very similar to the things I've already mentioned and that is you know it's a system for aging and in, in for elders to age in small geriatrician designed houses not other people geriatricians assigned for aging in place 
They get the support from a traditional nursing home, but they're not in one. There's a tight-knit group of neighbors. Some of us that are talking about community, oh yeah, neighbors. And their little ADA accessible houses close together with the communal green space. And that they have the autonomy and also to live in their own houses, but they have the safety net around them, not strangling them. So, and the other part is there's access to the outdoors. So they can also tap into if they're on, the first one is, and the whole point is to be on the campus of a CCRC so that they can get the help with bathing and eating and physical therapy possibly that they need, but they're in their own home. This is something that's reverberated with me for the last while, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, um, and again, he's reimagining people living outside of a facility. <sighs> Don't know if they're affordable, Barbara. Um, that's yet to be yet to be determined. I'm sure. Uh, it's like all, any of these trends. It takes time to have them uh, catch on. Now Bill's been working on this since 1990. So, but people, I mean, see see how revered he is. And I think that when he was talking to this group of builders, and they were they were, he was he was challenging them to say. Kind of get with the program because the train's leaving the station. And I think that at some point there will be people just like the, the people in uh, CCRCs and senior living and assisted living. That wasn't around 50 years ago. It's a matter of thinking about new models and the us saying, I'm not living in that other thing. I'm not paying you $8,000. <laughs> yeah, and Terry is saying we need we need things. Warehousing elderly means terrible care and miserable clients. I'm with you, sister. That's why I've been doing what I've been doing for years. And look up Bill Thomas. Get behind the things that he's doing. Yell loudly. And see, take a look at his his TED talk on YouTube. He's the most endearing guy. No notes, no ego, uh, and I love his diction. <laughs> he enunciates so well, and he's funny. I mean, really, really, really funny. Uh, and no notes for any talk that I've ever seen him give. And on a last note, I did have many personal experiences that I really ch cherish and that is um, one of the talks that he was identifying the Crohn's in the room. Now this is a Facebook talk that I was talking about him a ways back. So look at some of the uh, archives of my Facebook. But uh, the second time he asked if there were any Crohn's in the room, I stood up and was proud to be called one. The wise, wise women. And of course I did say, He's an author. I think he has 11 books. In his spare time, clearly, he writes his books. But some of the titles, I just crack up. I actually put these in the description for you so you can find them. Tribes of Eden, What Are Old People For? How Elders Will Save the World. No small thing to save. In the Arms of Elders, I believe, is the fable about loneliness, boredom, and the, the three plagues of, yeah, of elders, and life worth living. So hopefully you've fallen in with, in love with my friend Dr. Thomas as well, and the things that he is doing, has done, will do as well. So again, he is taking action. And I hope this inspired you. This is one person one person that we need to pay attention to. So when you're feeling glum about the future of where we might be living, there's hope. There is hope. So I guess the challenge would be to you today is, what can you do today? Anything you can do today towards that? I hope this has been really helpful to you. Uh, again, 
in order to stay connected and know what I'm up to and what we're up to is make sure you you subscribe to uh, yeah um, Jerry there's a link to Bill Thomas in the description uh, here of the title and the descriptions I'm pretty sure that's all there um, if not send me a direct message if we're friends on Facebook with Women Living and Community Network and I will definitely get it, get it to you um, yeah so there's lots about Dr. Thomas and yeah subscribe to my website and I will be glad to connect with you because next month yes October you'll be getting an email from me about uh, a, the continuing the quest group which is a class of women who actually has stayed on with me for a year after they took the class on my book and we've stayed connected and we have a actual reunion coming up meaning meaning there won't be just little squares that, that I see they will actually be human beings all vaccinated and next week next week don't forget about next week uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my housemate how we met how we got here and a few tips as to how you might find one too so women living in community.com you have any you can always message me here it's about connection information action thank you so much for being here and I will see you next week hopefully I will be introducing you to my housemate or a few of them Take care, everybody. Have a great week.